Was it CI or CD? Well, we tried when we need. Cramming for this exam, it got some knowledge. A feed gives a hunger degrees. Many months at the keys. To see the light at the end of the pipeline, got some plumbers with keys. Like Luigi and Mario with balls of fire from my attire. Spark Apache storm born through ghost busting clusters. Bill Murray hitting flustered, war torn hustlers. Certified like a certain eye or servant's cry delivery. It's continuously integrating the sights of your sight's reliabilities. But you know, Carlos and a nickel got what it takes. Minutemen always on the ready. Put the seal on that paper, cause our efforts never taper. Down here in data on Kubernetes. Yeah. Can you just start out by introducing yourself so people can get to know you, who you are, where you're working? We can start with you, Nico. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm working as a DevOps engineer or, or, or senior system administrator. Um, um, I'm working with uh, Kubernetes since the uh, beginning of uh, 2019, so almost two years ago. And I, 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 I went from a pure system administrator background to, to cloud infrastructure automation and, and the whole DevOps culture and also uh, Kubernetes microservices and all, all these kinds of things. Okay, very, very good. And with your first contact with Kubernetes, uh, how was it in the beginning? Were you like, eh, maybe this isn't for me, I've done a lot of other stuff, how was it? Well, by, by the time I, I faced Kubernetes, I, I, were, I was already working with Docker a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, but of course it was a, a big change. Uh, you know, you have to, 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 to adapt. Uh, uh, mentally to do this new way of thinking and working. Mm -hmm. okay. and, that, and that's a lot of what we talk about is that is as much as it might be a technological change that there's definitely a cultural change that goes along with it or a change in mentality. I'm sure that's something we'll be able to touch on a little bit more later. Carlos, what about yourself? Um, tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, what you're doing. Okay, so um, my background basically is a uh, develop, developer, but the, for the last uh, almost uh, seven years i've been working with uh, devops uh, technologies and currently i'm a solutions architect and a devops architect uh, for a consultant company usd uh, uh, the base is on um, on madrid mm -hmm. but uh, i work for a, a really big uh, project for the um, santander bank group um, and basically my, my main tasks are to define the uh, projects uh, architectures and well, all the, the continuous integration and continuous deployment uh, life cycle of all the microservices and even from the databases. Okay, with that in mind, Carlos, uh, and also because we always kind of struggle with the ne definitions, you know, I know Aneko's mentioned in his description, DevOps, Carlos, at this point, do you call this FinOps? Is this DevSecOps? Is this data ops? Is this site reliability <laughs> engineering? What is it? Well, I, 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 guess, I, I guess that everything is part of uh, the DevOps uh, terminology. I mean, um, I'm not uh, calling myself a DevSecOps, but obviously a, a big part of my day-to-day uh, -day tasks are to uh, focus on the security part, um, I mean, if, uh, my uh, before I started working for the Santander Bank Group, mm -hmm. I used to work for uh, in, well, a diplomatic company based in Bilbao uh, for European agencies, and the main focus on those projects are security mm -hmm. uh, from all different points of view. Uh, and well, yeah, the security is a main task, but I'm not calling myself a DevSecOps because, well, <laughs> ah, no, that's, that's not okay, my yeah. title. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, I know, but just we get so many things flying around. And even <laughs> yeah. in, in one of our meetups, it was like, okay, how do you define cloud native? What's, you know, what's what's cloud native? What isn't cloud native? How, anyway, these, these are big questions that we can, we can probably yeah. get to a little bit later. Now, Aneko, you took this exam recently. How recently was it? Um, Oh, let, let, sorry, I'm trying, trying to forget. forget. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to forget as, as soon as possible. I think it was uh, 
two, uh, two weeks ago or something. Two weeks ago, right? So uh, quite fresh. All right. So can you just give us some basics about the exam? You know, if, if someone wants to do it, what do they need to keep in mind? How long is it? How many questions? What style? What, what would you got to say about that? Yeah, well, it's a pure practical exam. I mean, they are all exercises. You have a, a, a terminal in, in, in the browser. And, 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 and from there, you have to, to, do, to solve uh, everything that they ask. Uh, to solve for everything that you can at least. Uh, I had like, I think it, there were 17 questions or, or problems to fix uh, in two hours. This is one of the changes. Yeah, this is one of the changes from, from September. Because it used to be longer, right? It used to be, yeah, yeah. yeah it used hours. to be three, three hours uh, and up to 25 questions. Now it's uh, between 17 and 19 questions and two hours. Yeah. Okay. And also, each, also the, yeah. does each question is, is each question assigned the same amount of value, or there are some questions that are maybe no. worth more points than others? No, no, no. Uh, they, they have different value, and, and, and you can see the value of uh, every question all the time. You know, they, they, it's there on the screen, so you can um, maybe you can think about I don't know. Maybe I should focus on this, or I'll pass. Maybe I'll try it later. You know, because. If it's just the two percent of the exam, maybe it's uh, probably not worth spending so much time. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. Very, very good. And uh, Carlos, did you decide to study on your own, or did you get in a course? Well, uh, actually, I started um, studying on my um, on my own, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, after searching a bit on. On, on the internet, what uh, where everyone uh, studying, uh, what courses they were doing. I found a, a really good one uh, from Code Cloud mm -hmm. um, on, on Udemy. Um, so yeah, that, that was uh, the best uh, course I I could uh, find about the CKA and the CKAD for both uh, certification. They have really good courses uh yeah so I, I started like that practice a lot okay practicing a lot okay so that, that's definitely you know practice makes perfect as we also heard you know proper preparation prevents poor performance i think that's going to be our sort of mantra exactly. of the day um and Nico, in your case how was it did you get in a course did you study on your own what'd you do well i i, I did the same course as carlos um, um it, it's a very well-known course uh, it's everywhere i mean it's a constantly mentioned on, on LinkedIn, for example. Um, it's a great course. I, I also had the, the, the well, the, the official course by, by the Linux Foundation, but I didn't use it um, because it was uh, like a, a gift, uh, like a promo that uh, they, they gave me uh, when I when I well when I when I bought the the, the exam. Uh, there was a like a like a I, I don't know. Like a Black Friday deal. It, this was uh, last year, um, um, and, and, and they gave me the, this course, but, but I didn't do it. So I focus on the Udemy course uh, Carlos mentioned, um, and also practice a lot with the uh, exercises that you can find, for example, on, on GitHub repositories. Okay, so that's uh, the thing is just so everybody knows as well. We'll be putting these links um, in the chat, also in the follow up post on LinkedIn, and also in our in our Slack uh, for the data on Kubernetes community. Um, because that's the thing, sometimes for a lot of people, it can be very overwhelming, like where do I start, who do I trust, how much money do I need to spend? In both your case with this course on Udemy, what was the cost, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I think I paid like 10 euros, something like that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, also, yeah, and also what I, what I did. both courses, yeah. Yeah, and, and what I did also that, that I, I forgot to mention is that uh, uh, there, there is a uh, like a simulator which is called uh, killer dot uh, sh mm -hmm. and and this simulator uh, gives you two two opportunities or two sessions to 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 practice you know you have uh, 25 questions to to solve it's pretty much like the exam i will say the environment everything it's very similar of course as exercises are different but but uh, the, the, I would say it's harder than the than the exam itself. So it's a good preparation because you are going to to face uh, more complex uh, uh, questions and exercises, and so you feel more prepared for the exam. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
this does seem to be quite difficult. Do we, I, maybe we don't know, you know, the, the percentage of what people pass and fail, but Carlos, in, you know, because you've done lots of courses. I know when we worked together, you were constantly on Plural Site. When you weren't on Plural Site, you were on something else. Um, obviously working as well, but um, compared, to other, <laughs> compared to other exams or maybe other certification processes you've been in, uh, how stressful was this? Can you say maybe from a scale from one to 10, how stressful was it? Uh, well, I would say that uh, the CKAD, that was my first certification like uh, four or five months ago, was really stressful, like um, eight points okay. stressful okay. On, on them. Because, uh, well, it was my first uh, time on, on a so practical exam. Uh, I was nervous uh, because of the environment. I mean, I, I wasn't sure if everything was uh, on my laptop was prepared. And I had a really bad experience uh, using my, my laptop because uh, usually, I don't know why everyone uh, use Google Chrome for the, for the exam uh, or Firefox. In my case, uh, both of those browsers didn't work. So I used uh, Vivaldi, but uh, the problem was well when I connected to the to the test 15 minutes before it started, um, I was uh, preparing everything and suddenly uh, I couldn't connect. So I got more nervous, more, stressed, yeah. uh, more stressful, yeah, um, and that, that was a sh a sh because I, I lost like a half an hour trying to find what was the correct setup, why the browser wasn't working, uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, up to this point I'm not sure what happened, but Vivaldi works perfectly in, in my CKAD certification and in my CKA certification, so I recommend if, if, if uh, you have some problems with the setup, try Vivaldi. Uh, it's a really nice browser. And uh, what I used to do is, is to practice uh, on my terminal or using the Code Cloud uh, course and also uh, having open the, the Vivaldi browser so I, I could uh, save the bookmarks of the documentation. All right. Uh, and Echo, in your case, any technical recommendations you might recommend about what's important to have to be able to do this correctly and not have so much stress? Yeah, uh, I would say it's, it's really important. I would say it's critical or, or at least very, very important to, have to spend the few, the, 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 the very, I don't know, like the first five minutes, five to ten minutes, setting up the environment. One, once you start the, the, the exam, you know, uh, don't read the first question, just set up everything. For example, a Beam Editor or, I don't know, some aliases in, in Bash for kubectl and these kinds of things. I found this very, very important. It was a, a good recommendation that I read and, well, it, it definitely helped a lot. All right, very, very good. Also, the, also the, the physical environment is, is really important. Uh, you have to be in a, well, you, you have to show the, the, the whole room to the, to the person on the other side through the webcam of, of your computer. Also, well, they, they asked me to, to, to show behind my, behind my desk, uh, you know, uh, and, and behind, below, and everywhere, around my desk, like uh, two or three times. Also, you, you can have, for example, I have a bookshelf here behind me. I had to cover it with, uh, with blankets. Because uh, I have books here, you know, so, uh, well, it, it, this was part of the... Of but, but, that's the thing, but, well. that's, but it's interesting because it's not something you would necessarily think, I mean, it makes sense, all right? But it's not something that maybe for other kinds of certifications that there is so much up close and personal detail to make sure that mm -hmm. things are done fairly and without any access to, to additional resources. Um, so yeah. I, but I, that's just, those are just other elements that people should definitely keep in mind, you know, that it's not... Like you have yeah. the one thing about the environment on your computer in terms of how things are set up and then also the physical environment that's around you. Um, yeah. Also now in 2020, I think all of our physical environments have changed a bit. Um, yeah. Earlier we were seeing as well with Carlos with trying to change the background depending on what kind of a call you're on. <laughs> anyway, all these things can, 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 can influence and particularly when you're only talking about two hours, you know, the added stress of, of environmental factors uh, can definitely be a big one. Um, good. Carlos, can you just walk us through a little bit about how, you know, in terms of the, the, the main blocks 
of the topics that are that are covered on the exam? Yes, yeah, so uh, really important to to practice uh, at least uh, well several times uh, each of the topics. Um, for the CKA, uh, it's it's uh, more focus on on an administrator point of view. So you have to uh, learn um, how the Kubernetes master works. On, uh, the insights of, of the Kubernetes master, uh, you have to know where is located the um, well the, the uh, all the elements that uh, are part of the Kubernetes master. How you can uh, deploy it uh, and learn how uh, you can troubleshoot uh, the master. It's uh, and also there are there are some um, like a common parts uh, in the CKAD and the CKA, uh, well, uh, how to deploy a, a pod, how to, to, to create uh, all the different resources on, on the cluster, uh, services, ingress controllers, uh, well, I mean, uh, what uh, this, this um, since uh, like an echo said before, since uh, September, more or less, the the certification has changed. So in the reality now, the what it used to be the CKA is uh, was breaking down in two parts. The security part was moved to uh, another certification, and everything else is stuck in the CKA. So now it's a good time to to start with this certification because uh, now we have less content so we can prepare better for that uh, part of the kubernetes world um yeah more or less, yeah good 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 and echo with, with that in mind uh kind of touching what carlos mentioned going into this you know you have your experience working in devops was there any particular aspect of the exam that you had to spend more time to get prepared for that maybe you didn't have enough experience going into or that took you maybe a little bit by surprise as being more challenging than you thought? Hmm. Yeah, well, m many times uh, when, when you work with Kubernetes uh, uh, in a company, uh, you know, m many times the, the service is managed by, by whatever cloud provider, you know. And this means that you are not in charge of the of the control plane and the and the master nodes. So, uh, if this is your case, uh, I would say that it's important to 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 focus on this area. You know, knowing all the components around the the, the master nodes and and all the services, the troubleshooting, uh, etcd. I think it's uh, also very important. Uh, to to know about this the the database of the of the cluster itself so these these are the, the 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 areas that are more more important because if you work for example on on azure with aks or amazon web services with eks then you are not in charge of the of the master you 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 like you are uh, i don't know but maybe you are a bit far from the from the complete administration of the cluster you know and, so, and this person, if you don't mind if I stop you just because from listening to other podcasts about the whole certification process and understanding the spirit of Kubernetes is to get that interoperability that you don't have to just be stuck with, all right, I'm only an Azure person or I'm only an Amazon person, but it's a kind of, once again, talking about mentality and a cultural sort of thing, understand that this is to provide versatility to make, um, you know, people that work in DevOps, such as yourselves, to give them, empower them with the ability to avoid vendor lock-in and to be able to work in a cross-cloud, multi-cloud environment. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, of course, it has uh, it has its benefits. Um, in, in a way, you are you are uh, you are. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe you feel like uh, you are bound to, to to a cloud provider in particular, but. Um, but, but I don't think it's uh, it's it's like that. You know? At the end, because uh, you can move easily with your all your workload to, to, to another cluster in another cloud provider. It's, it's not that different, but you know, you, you of course you don't have the, the, the master nodes and the API server and everything. 
you don't you you spend your time maybe I don't know in in, in some other interesting things and, and not uh, checking all the services uh, that are running uh, 24 hours. Very good, Carlos. Was there anything that you found to be easy, easier than you expected? You're like, oh wow, I could do this, you know, with one hand. <laughs> well, yes, the <laughs> oh very good. <laughs> yeah, the cluster backup. I I never thought that it was as easier than it is. I mean, in the reality, as as an echo said, um, uh, in in your daily life, you don't create from scratch a Kubernetes cluster. You always use a cloud provider for uh, managing the Kubernetes services. So. Uh, I used to think that uh, making a, um, creating the uh, backup of the cluster itself was a really difficult task, but um, I mean, we have a tool that uh, help us to, to do it in an easy way that, uh, like I said, the database of the master, the HCD um, database. So uh, it, it surprised me a lot that it was really easy to to create a backup and also to restore it. Uh, I usually, in my in my in the projects I work for, usually use uh, Velero as a tool for backing up uh, any part of the Kubernetes cluster. But it was it was really nice to see that uh, I suppose that behind the scenes, uh, Velero does something similar like uh, executing uh, commands uh, against etcd. So yeah, that, that, that was a, an easy part. Okay, and a, 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 nice, a nice surprise <laughs> we can say. And Eka, would you agree yeah. as well, the, the part related to backups or your experience with Valera, do you concur with Carlos? <laughs> yeah, well, I mostly agree with Carlos, but I had a bad experience in, during the exam with the TCD because uh, I think it was related to, to how the question was presented, you know? Uh, I understood one thing and they were asking for another. So it took me more time than I expected to, to figure out uh, what exactly I, I, I had to do. Of course, it was a backup and, and, and a restore, but it wasn't that easy because uh, I, I, I went quickly to the, to the master node and started trying to packing up the ETCD. But it wasn't like that. I, I didn't have to go into a master node. Uh, I, I had to do it uh, from the student node you know which is the, the computer that you face when you log in the, the first time so it was it was confusing because i didn't expect that uh, so i, I spent more more time there than, than, than i expect okay all right no worries um now uh carlos as we are a data community is there anything that you could comment on your experience preparing <laughs> your experience as working in devops as well related to the topic of storage Yes, yeah, so uh, you have to um, manage uh, all the, the volumes that you mount on, on the node. So you have to prepare um, thoroughly the persistent volumes, the resources uh, of Kubernetes, persistent volumes, persistent volume claims. You have to know how to uh, attach uh, uh, a persistent volume to a pod. Uh, and you have to uh, be able to, um, for example, share uh, volumes between two pods on this, uh, I mean, two containers on the same pod and also uh, sharing a volume between two pods. Um, that's a, um, a really, uh, I mean, it's an interesting part of the, of the exam because uh, I've been struggling a lot with uh, all these concepts in my uh, working life uh, and that gave me uh, the proper knowledge to understand what's uh, happening behind the scenes. Uh, so it's really important to, to read the documentation, uh, test uh, all the several options that you have on those resources, also get to know the storage classes, how to how to use it for a cloud provider because um, of course it's different when you when you attach a volume in a local uh, node let's say uh, than in a cloud uh, node so because you can use the the disks that uh, Azure or uh, Amazon or Google Cloud can provide uh, can provide 
So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different way to, to use it. Each provider has uh, their own tags, their own annotations. So, yeah, that, that it's a really interesting part for your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work life, yeah. Okay, once again, I think we can all agree there's a very practical focus on this. As, a, as a Nico mentioned from the very beginning, they're not going to ask you questions that, that don't have some kind of a practical application. Um, and Nico, in your case, based on your experience, was there anything uh, about the data part of, that was involved in the preparation of the exam that you found to be particularly challenging or anything that, that stood out for you? Um, well, uh, mostly what Carlos said, but I, but I, I missed something. Um, I think a, a nice addition for, for, the, for the exam, for example, related to data, uh, will be uh, custom storage classes. Because I think uh, sometimes you need to create your own storage class for whatever reason, you know, especially working with uh, cloud providers. Because, uh, for example, imagine that you need to, to have uh, an storage in, in, in a particular region or with a particular uh, features, you know. Uh, then you might have to create a, a custom storage class. And I think it's a, an important topic that it wasn't in, in the exam and it's a, a nice thing to, to, to do. So I missed this from the exam, but uh, for the rest of the things, uh, uh, what Carlos said, I, I, I faced exactly the same. So. Okay. And, and as you seem to kind of move forward, because as you mentioned previously as well too, you know, the exam used to be three hours and now it's two. Anyway, there are a lot of different reasons why this could happen. But do you think that in the future, as storage, and, you know, and once again, particularly within the context of our, our community focused on data, um, do you imagine that storage will get more importance in the exam, that there will be more of a focus on that as more people such as yourselves are starting to have to work with some of these issues? Like I said, the sort of blending DevOps, data ops, I mean, we can, like I said, we can debate uh, what does one mean? What does another mean? When does a DevOps become a data ops or vice versa or how many different hats you have to wear? Um, but based on how things are going, uh, from the things that we've seen in our community, it seems that you know storage is becoming well, is extremely important for many companies as we're generating more data. You know, we talked about with uh, with Gary from from Cloudian about a month uh, about a month ago about how just when you think about the amount of data that's generated from an autonomous car with everything be, having sensors. You know, here in the, in, in the part of the world where we live, we talk a lot about Industry 4.0, where you have all these, you know, where machines, uh, IoT, everything has sensors. Um, all this data has to be stored somewhere. So do we imagine that storage will become more important on this exam in the future? What do you think, Carlos? It should be, it should be. I mean, uh, we just uh, learn the scratch, I mean, the basics of how to manage uh, how to connect to an, an storage on, on a node, but uh, there are uh, a lot of things that uh, could be added to the to the exam in the future. The thing is that um, yes, all the the data data processing and everything uh, now now is a uh, it's um, usually managed by a, a cluster as Kubernetes, for example, uh, but the uh, it's not um, as, as easier as you can think uh, uh, to uh, have a proper storage connected to the to a cluster. Uh, I've been struggling with this uh, topic a lot during the last uh, two years, um, and I uh, haven't had the, the let's say the, the proper solution for uh, for all the cases. Uh, for, Sometimes it's easier to use a uh, cloud storage. Sometimes it's easier to use a uh, disk uh, attached to to a node. Uh, depends on the on the performance, as the son said before. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it depends. So I think uh, in the future uh, more uh, topics related to data could be included in the, on the exam, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, a, a topic that needs um, to be more, I, I think uh, the, the, the proper path will be to have a very strong community working a lot on, on this matter, because we, I, I've been reading a lot of uh, forums and um, 
everyone is uh, struggling with the data management on a, on a um, Kubernetes cluster or any other orchestrator uh, for this matter. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a really interesting topic that should be, uh, yes. Um, Develop further in the and, and the thing is, and I look forward to having more conversations inside our community precisely about that because we, we're very lucky to, to, to have lots of people um, from all over the world that have different kinds of experiences. And to take that a little bit further in your case, Nico, um, in terms of, I don't know, you know exactly what you studied, but working a lot over, over the years in operations, then when did we start calling things DevOps? Or, you know, when did this transition take place? But also from your perspective, um, what was your experience like previously working with data? And do you feel like it's become more important over the years? Um, well, uh, you know, the thing with data and Kubernetes is that it depends a lot on, 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 on your application, on the application that you try to, to run on Kubernetes. It depends a lot, a lot. But I think that uh, um, uh, if more and more applications, uh, for example, like uh, big data applications, they, they, these kinds of things, if they are deployed more and more on Kubernetes. Uh, this is an, an area that uh, has to has to be improved for sure, because because I agree with Carlos that um, managing data on Kubernetes is not as straightforward as uh, we would like. Sometimes uh, you face uh, very strange issues. For example, I had uh, an issue uh, at home with a small Kubernetes cluster that I have here uh, regarding MySQL. You know, it was a, a container with a MySQL database, and it was uh, a storage on on an uh, well on an uh, NFS uh, share mm. over the network, and and this is a very bad idea apparently for for MySQL. So it depends a lot on, on, on the application, the database that you are using, the, the, how do you store uh, data, um, the, 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 the size of these, the, the, the size of the blocks. I mean, it, it's a lot of things that uh, there is no unique, uh, perfect solution for, for I, data and, and, the, and that's been um, shared by a lot of folks that we've talked to in this community where there's going to be an element of DIY. There's going to be an element of trial and error. You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to expect that, you know, different things, that, just solutions that you're going to try aren't going to work exactly the way you like them to. But once again, that's why we have a community so that people can share these experiences mm -hmm. and learn from each other and avoid some of those mistakes or errors. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and also just to know that other people have done the same thing. It probably has involved uh, a degree of patience and, and a lot of learning and maybe unlearning and then relearning. Um, but those are, those are things to keep in mind there. Now, talking about um, experience, all right, Carlos, do you think, I mean, I know it's difficult to gauge because what one person, what a certain person can do maybe in one year isn't the same as another, but for example, do you think uh, this exam is for students or you definitely need at least two or three years working out there in some kind of DevOps or, uh, or other or developers or what kind of experience do you think is necessary? Um. <laughs> well, that, that's a really good question. I mean, uh, my advice is uh, and a student from scratch cannot uh, get uh, everything that involves uh, a Kubernetes cluster. I mean, you re it's, uh, in my opinion, you require having a professional experience, at least. Uh, that's a that's a nice, uh, uh, something nice to have uh, because uh, understanding all the the um, details and everything from how uh, the nodes work, how everything is connected, how is uh, all the services are deployed, so everything it's uh, tied together uh, requires not only um, uh, have some degree. Yeah. So you you require really experience on. Uh, struggling with servers, uh, knowing how to uh, troubleshoot a, a service inside the, prop, the, the, the server itself, uh, how to use journal CTL, for example, system D to, to get the, the logs from, from a service. Uh, so, but uh, I, I suggest uh, always start with the CKAD because that certification is more focused on a development 
part of the Kubernetes world. So that's a, a really nice to have before uh, starting with the CKA. Uh, also, it helped me, for example, to to lose my the the, um, the stress and the nervous to to get the well to to get the certification, the CKA. That it seems uh, at the beginning it seems more important, but depends on on what uh, on your work what is focused on. Mm. I got both certification because um, I, I think it's, it's a really nice uh, path to follow. The next uh, certification will be uh, the CKS, the security part of, of, of this uh, Kubernetes world. So yeah, but uh, I spent a lot of time practicing apart from my daily to daily tasks that I'm involved for, uh, on different kinds of Kubernetes cluster, so yeah, it, it helped me a lot uh, having the, this experience. Yeah. Okay, good. And Echo, anything for you to add regarding experience, things that you say it's necessary to do this, or I wouldn't take the exam if you haven't done that? Anything you would want to comment there? Um, well, what I mentioned at the very beginning is that uh, for me, it was a big change, you know, that the, um, the you know that the, the mindset or I, I don't know how to say it but that you have to be really thinking in in a kubernetes way uh for sure okay and, and so can you let's take a little bit more. what does that mean to be thinking in a kubernetes way <laughs> well um uh it's it, it, this goes beyond beyond docker you know even if you work with containers but and this is this is a way way beyond docker because uh it's, it's not also orchestration i mean uh, like we mentioned we have this uh, uh storage that uh, the, the, the the pods can share or even the containers can share um and and many many things running the networking everything you know uh, running running for us um so this is uh, i mean since everything it's uh, you, you you have the feeling that it's uh, that everything it's uh, like a thousand pieces you know um somehow uh everything is working but you have to figure out how and this is probably the the, the most difficult task um so definitely i i will say that you need to 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 have a, a real professional experience with this because otherwise uh, you wouldn't understand even uh, what Kubernetes is for in the first place. Yeah, so that it's until you really have contact with it in the sense of being a user that it's gonna just seem way too yeah. uh, conceptual or just too far out there. Yeah, well, maybe you can pass the exam, you know, because if you practice a lot, you are going to pass the exam for sure. But this doesn't mean that you are going to understand uh, how it works uh, behind the scenes. Um, and the, the, the reasons behind the, every component and well maybe you can pass the exam but uh, you are not going to, to to be prepared for for working with kubernetes in, in a production environment anyway. all right very good um and in that sense as well too just ask both of you how many months did you spend preparing carlos uh, well really preparing i've been uh, practicing more or less like uh, six months ago, uh, an average of uh, two hours per day, apart from uh, my working. And where, you're, where you're learning as well in a very hands on way. You know, I mean, like that, that does count, but yeah. additionally, yes, that exactly. Time, Ad yeah. okay. Additionally, uh, completely focus on preparing the, the exam, more or less two hours. Well, both of the certification. I mean, uh, this is what I'm always uh, saying that preparing for one certification helped you a lot for the next one. So, uh, yes, okay. for both certification, more or less six months. Okay. And in Echo, you did it in six days. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, but how long did it take you? How long? Uh, no, not really, not really. Um... Well, it's hard to say because uh, I didn't focus especially on on this. You know, it, it, I, I I bought the 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 exam or the right to the exam uh, in in the previous Black Friday, so a year ago, something like that. 
uh, but I haven't been studying for a year. I mean, uh, I went, I don't know, I, I had my my good moments where I, where I spent a, a lot of time with this and also many months of uh, a total blackout. Uh, uh, so I, it's really hard to say. Well, well, I, I will, in 2020, I, you picked a pretty good year. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have been at home a lot of time to, to, to study. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I would say several weeks at least if you really focus on this. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, once, but once again, like you said, it's a mixture of the things that you're doing on work based on the amount yeah. of free time that you have to be able to dedicate to the exam other commitments yeah. that you may have going on. Very, very good. Now, um, Carlos, is there anything that wasn't on the exam? Obviously, once again, you've done two, all right? And now you're also thinking about going for the third for security, but is there anything based on your, your professional experience that you feel that should be tested or maybe should be tested more? Uh, well, I think uh, between both certifications, the CKAD and the CKA, I think it, pretty much cover it everything so that that's that's why i said that's a really nice path to follow mm. uh, i i only miss the part that now are on the cks certificate because for uh, when i started to to prepare myself for the certifications uh, the all the for example the code cloud course wasn't updated to remove the parts that are uh, now on the CKS. So I learned a lot of uh, security parts that, um, well, it helped me for my daily work um, on Kubernetes, but uh, um, it, it wasn't um, used on the exam. Uh, so I think, um, if you uh, prepare for both certification, you will realize that it, it covers all the spectrum of the Kubernetes uh, um, pieces. So no, I, I really don't miss anything. Uh, perhaps in the future would be nice to have something um, more focused on cloud services, for example, I don't know, a solution, I don't know, like AKS or EKS, I don't know, but it will be really nice because at the end, like an echo said uh, at the beginning of, of this talk, uh, we are always working with uh, some Kubernetes service. Uh, it's really, um, it's really, really uh, rare to find someone that uh, deploy a Kubernetes cluster from scratch or uh, apart from doing it for uh, fun or for uh, um, curiosity, out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think uh, anyone has a, uh, I mean, in, in a normal environment, let's say, it, uh, in a, in, you don't deploy a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. It's a really nice experience. In fact, I use the Kubernetes hard um, way uh, from Kelsey Hightower to learn the, the I mean, everything from scratch. And it's a really nice experience from the DevOps point of view, but it's complicated and requires a lot of effort. So, yeah. All right. And Eko, what about you? Is there anything that, you know, working in this profession, having regular contact with Kubernetes, is there anything that you feel that, or maybe that you do really well, you're like, can they please ask me a question about this? Or I would like them to, you know, to focus on this more. But just like I said, from a professional perspective, obviously we are seeing, you know, sort of segmentation and specialization mm -hmm. with these different certificates, certifications. But is there anything that you feel that, that should be tested more? Yeah, I, I made several things. Uh, both security policies, uh, uh, it's an example, but I guess this is this has been moved to the Kubernetes uh, to the CKS, the new uh, certification for security. But also, I would say, uh, running update strategies. Uh, this is something that you use uh, in production. Uh, limit range, if you want to, 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 to put some limits on namespaces and have uh, some kind of control of resources. You know, I think this is also very important if you have your cluster in a cloud provider and you don't want to spend uh, thousands and thousands in in, in in wasted resources and also about disruption budget as well um 
these things are in, in the official documentation and um, so at least some of them were part of the course that, that we had, but uh, they weren't on, at least they weren't on, on my exam. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, now that we're kind of getting towards the end, are there any final recommendations? All right. Just to, just to repeat some of the resources that you used, took a course, things like that. Um, but are there any other recommendations for people out there that want to study? Because this does seem to be a pretty hard exam. Um, so based on the fact that both of you have now done it, also, you have to keep in mind the how long is your certification good for? How many years? Three years. Three years. Three years. All right. So you're 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 good for for that amount of time, and then in three years' time, you have to be start playing again. Um, hopefully, there won't be another there won't be another lockdown or confinement in three years. So hopefully, you'll have to wait a lot more to be able to study. But um, just keeping that in mind, I mean, both of you, um, I had the pleasure of working together with Carlos. Uh, I've known Aneko for a bit, although we never actually crossed paths. Both of you are very, very active um, in, in terms of learning, in terms of social media, in terms of uh, following different people on commenting, on interacting, and things like that. These are all kind of best practices, we could say, for just about everybody, um, and also being you know, actively willing to help out um, with community-based issues and things like that. Are there any recommendations um, you, I mean, did you, uh, ask direct questions maybe to people who you didn't know, who you maybe saw in forums or, or, or different places like that? Well, nowadays uh, Slack, for example, is a really good tool for um, connected with uh, different communities. Uh, for example, CodeCloud has a Slack channel, uh, also Linux Foundation. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, both of those um, uh, companies, let's say, they have a channels specific for the certifications, and it's really nice to to see everyone posting. Uh, well, what are they struggling with? Um, if someone passed the exam, well, you post. Uh, I passed, and everyone is cheering you up. And or if you fail, also. Uh, so it's a really nice way to connect with people, and also to to see that. Everyone is uh, struggling with the same problems as you, so I I, I will suggest to 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 search for um, Slack as as a communication tool to to get knowledge on on the exam also. Yeah, with that in mind as well, Carlos, can I ask how many Slacks are you in? At the moment, <laughs> in in my daily day to day life, um. Nine. nine. I am okay. active on nine slacks. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, and Echo, about what about yourself? How many slacks? No, three or four. Okay. 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 So you're, you're yeah. keeping it. You're keeping it. You're keeping it low profile. But I think yeah. I think Carlos's point is a very good one, and something that we see in our community as well. And we talked about this last week actually with Jeremy and Francesco, is that people want to be asked questions. You know, like people aren't. You know, yeah. when it comes to these things about like, hey, like I've encountered this problem. I've seen that you're, uh, you seem to be a good resource. You have, you know, knowledge. I think generally people like being asked questions as the two of you as well. You know, if someone comes to you and says, Hey, I'm preparing for this exam. I've encountered this kind of a problem. Uh, what do you think I should do? I imagine both of you would be you know, more than willing to help out. And that's, what's been really cool for me is to see with all these people with different experiences, folks from all over the world, different countries that it, a lot of it is like, well, we have common problems. How can we work on them together to make this easier? You know? Um, so I think that's, I think it's a really positive thing to see, but in in your experience, did you, uh, did you reach out to anybody or, or get help from anybody out there? Um, well, if I have, if I have a very specific issue with, uh, with an open source project, something like that, of course, on GitHub, it's a, a good place to, 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 to ask, maybe open an issue, document everything and, and, and wait for the community to to get back to you. Um, apart from that, sometimes, but not it's not that regular to, to some other colleague that I have on my network. Mm -hmm. um, but usually, usually it's everything, uh, uh, you know, at a couple of clicks. So, I mean, you, you can hire, you can find a very, very specific issue with, uh, as I say, with a very, I don't know, with an application or, or, or a small component that, that you install, but that it's something very, very specific that you find on Google. Maybe you find something, maybe you don't. So maybe you have to go to, 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 to the source directly. Yeah. 
And yeah. with, with that as mine as well, Nick, we got a question from, uh, from Kike in the audience. And he wants to know, uh, what are the most useful tools to work with with Kubernetes in order to prepare the exam? Basically, what do you have in your toolbox? You know, I mean, I know Carlos mentioned earlier, Vivaldi, uh, we had, we had yeah. a mention of, of a couple other things here and there. Is there anything yeah. specific that either one of you would recommend? We can start with you, Aneko. Yes, for Kubernetes, yes. For the exam, uh, uh, well, maybe they, they, are, they are tools that you cannot use on, uh, during the exam, you know. But for example, um, kubectx, because you are changing context, uh, context are, are different clusters, you know. So you are, you are changing uh, context uh, almost constantly while you are working with different Kubernetes clusters. So I would say kubectx in order to change uh, the, the context quickly from jumping from one cluster to another. Uh, kubeNS, which is uh, basically the same, but for name spaces. Mm -hmm. Maybe for people that it's a starting, I would recommend uh, Kine9s. Also, it's uh, another interesting tool for people that maybe need uh, a graphical boost, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they, they feel comfortable with a graphical interface, more or less, because it's in the terminal, but it's some, <laughs> it has some graphics. And, and maybe it's easier to, to, to start with this. Mm -hmm. All right. Carlos, also, anything that you would, or sorry, an echo, go ahead. No, no, yeah. No, as, as I mentioned before, uh, having a proper configuration for Beam editor um, and also some aliases on, on, on Bash or, or another shell that, that you like. All right, very, very good. Um, Carlos, anything that you would add regarding tools? Yes, uh, well, it's really important to work with aliases so you save time executing commands. So one thing that helped me a lot was to, uh, in, on the exam, you have a notepad. So the first thing I did when I started the exam was to uh, put all the aliases that were uh, going to be used during the exam and also some uh, special configuration, for example, for Beam. So it's really important to, to get a lot of practice with Beam or nano or B, uh, whatever you, I mean, practice a lot with the, with the, with the tool that you are going, you are comfortable with. In, in this case, for me was Beam. Um, and also uh, there is a really nice uh, um, page on the documentation that is the commands cheat sheet that uh, you can, uh, you see there the how to, uh, configure the terminal to to get uh, auto completion of the commands, and also you have uh, different examples on for the for for example how to change uh, namespace context or uh, those those kind of things that uh, are um, pretty big commands. So instead of uh, learning it by heart, you can use the command cheat sheet to to use it. Yeah. Very, very good. I, whether, you know, there's always lots of things out there that people want to get access to. And Carlos, actually, if you wouldn't, if you, if you wouldn't mind, could you actually write those in the chat, the, the ones that you just mentioned, just so that um, some of the people that are out there, they can, that, that way you can take a look. Um, because it's always a bit of a, you know, a struggle, like where do I start? What's the best one to use? Um, I don't want to waste any time because there's so many options. Um, so sometimes it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, but with that being said, this conversation, I think we'll have to, we'll probably have to continue it in Slack because we're just about out of time. But as always, when we're finishing, um, we always uh, prepare something for our, for our speakers, uh, which is an amazing piece of graphic recording that is uh, done by our, our artist in residence, uh, Angel Ardiluzu. Um, Gorka, can you uh, share the screen so we can see um, what Angel did? Good, I think you guys can see it. Can you see my screen? All right, if you check that out, we get like a whole different depiction of all the different things that happened, um, including, um, I mean, there were a lot of different things that were, that were mentioned here. Um, so I think uh, we also got the musical note in the beginning of proper, prepara proper preparation prevents poor performance. It's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, for Maserati in the beginning, the first time we've had musical accompaniment. Um, so we'll be sure to send that to you. And just as a reminder for everybody else, we will, um, as usual, have a, a meetup next week at the same time. We'll be having it with uh, Eduardo Tomas who, from Plain Concepts, a company that both uh, Eneko and Carlos know uh, probably quite well. 
and he will be talking about all of his experience of running uh, running data on Kubernetes. Uh, quite experienced, uh, starting out with Docker, um, also working with Netcore, and working on Kubernetes projects uh, for playing concepts in, in several different countries in Europe. So definitely excited to have him. Um, for the two of you, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. I think, like I said, this is a really, really practical way to see something that a lot of people probably have in mind, but they're not sure 100%. Um, sometimes we see in, in job up, uh, job advertisements that, that folks are sharing that um, some of the companies definitely recommend, if not require having a certification. So I think there's a lot to be said for that, that there is a real practical value of knowing that someone has gone through that process. Um, I'm very happy for both of you that you will have three years of holidays, we can say, until you have to renew this. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, Carlos, absolutely best of luck with the, uh, the security certification. Perhaps we can get in touch with you Thank again you. once you once you've done that to, to hear about what your experience has been like. Oh, like please. I said, for everybody, as, as always, please feel free to get in our Slack. Um, if you want to give a talk, all you got to do is get in touch with me. We're always looking for speakers for lots of different things. It can be a talk on here at our weekly meetups or in, in, our, in our podcast. Um, so with that being said, I, I think we're good to go. Thank you both very, very much for your time. It was great having you, and I'm sure we'll be having you back. Thank you very really much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.